Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new installment of Hashtag Know Your Troc, where we give you the opportunity to meet a different person within the Troc's family. Um, the person we will be chatting with today happens to be one of my favorite humans. Uh, and you do not get to see her on stage because she's usually making magic happen from the front of the house or the backstage area. And she is our lighting supervisor, Erica Johnson. Hi, Erica. Hi. Um, so let's jump right in so we can let people know as much about you as we possibly can. Why don't you um, share with the viewers, where are you originally from and where did you go to school and for what? Um, well, I am originally from Florida, Central Florida, a town so small you've never heard of it. And I, but I grew up in Connecticut and ended up going to school at the University of Connecticut for lighting design. So lighting design has always been my passion. And um, how did you first hear about the Trocaderos? Well, that's actually a super funny story, which I'll take the time to tell. Um, mm -hmm. I got forwarded, e Isabel had sent an email to a friend of hers asking them to go on a tour because they needed a designer for just a quick one-off tour, I guess. And that personal email between friends got sent around the lighting designer circuit. I don't know if the poor guy sent it to one other friend who must have then forwarded it out as though it were a job search. Uh, and so I, because I really wanted to go on tour, I fell in love with the trucks. I emailed Isabel right away with my resume and said, uh, I would be perfect for this job. Please take me as my, my very best foot forward to get a response from Isabel that said, this is great. Um, please disregard any correspondence so far. I'm going to send a fresh email that's very professional <laughs> and we'll go from there. And then... We interviewed and, of course, hit it off. But I just realized I remember now. I was truly mortified when you responded because that email that I wrote to the lighting designer in question was pretty desperate. It was like I need someone it's to go. Very casual. It was not a formal job <laughs> invite, so it was just being passed around every New York lighting designer and their assistants. And what a riot! Um, so uh, for the record, it, oh, it okay. was, we didn't have options. We had options. It just happened to be um, uh, with, we were in a crunch with a short period of time and among production people, especially in the wor world of dance, especially in New York City, we mm -hmm. can all like ping each other right away and recommend other folks for the jobs. So uh, that's how were, anyone in my line tends to get jobs is an right. email forward. So. Yeah, it's like, how many jobs have you gotten with your actual resume appealing for a job without somebody's recommendation, right? Yeah. Um, so before I ask you a little bit about your background, for those who are watching who are not necessarily familiar with the job of a lighting supervisor, in this case, since we're talking about um, the job that you do with the trucks, why don't you tell the viewers a little bit of what the tour day-to-day is like, like what are some of the challenges that you encounter day to day? Um, well, it's gonna be hard to put a dent in some of the challenges, but we'll start with the simple day to day. I didn't know what to expect either when I first went on the road, which is why it's so great to go on the road with Isabel because she's seen it all and is very capable of handling anything. So it's a, it's a good spot to start in your first touring lighting supervisor role. Um, well, if from before the tour even starts, I'm responsible for generating all the lighting paperwork for what we're going to walk into because in ballet and a lot of other dance, uh, when you get to the theater to set up for the show, you're pretty much focused on lighting. The floor should be there. There's no set to speak of unless there's a few drops and that's very quick to get hung. So most of the load in day is getting the lights focused and then cued. So that's my biggest, the biggest part of my job is the day of the show or the day before the show if we have a two day load in. Um, but to back it up to earlier in the process, knowing that day is coming, my job for each show and on a tour that could be like 25 to 30 shows is to generate the lighting plot paperwork for the house and communicate back and forth with them about, often through Isabel, about what our needs are, what they can provide, what they can't provide, and then generate brand new paperwork. Uh, and work all that back and forth until we actually get there. And then me and Isabel and the associate production manager on occasion will be the first people in that theater first thing in the morning on the day of the show. And um, 
if it's on a short load in and it's the day of the show, we just get all the lights focused and queue up the show and basically work right until curtain. Uh, on a longer tour, we have more time. It's a little more of um, a casual workflow, I guess, for lighting, but it's it's never casual. That's not really the right word. It's a hustle. Um, and I so guess the biggest, to answer the question that you didn't exactly ask, but this is probably what I wondered when I started, the difference between being a lighting supervisor and a lighting designer is the a ballet or a dance comes with lighting needs already. These pieces for the tracks were mostly designed in the 70s and 80s, right? So the design of the piece is long done and it's my job to maintain it. So when I'm generating all the paperwork and thinking about the show ahead of time, I'm not thinking about it from a designer perspective. I'm thinking about it from a how to implement that in this space on this day with the rest of these shows all around this tour. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, and also with the instrumentation available in the venue, right? Because as you were sort of alluding to, we we being a touring dance company that goes like in a rock and roll type of schedule, um, and not many dance companies tour that way anymore. Uh, no. We don't travel with any lighting equipment. So you, such a great part of your job is implementing that lighting design that has been in place for 30 or 40 years with whatever instrumentation the venue has available, which oh, yeah. can vary wildly. From and especially from literally day to day if we're doing a tour that's so packed. So it's a little bit of a... Uh, uh. <laughs> but it's really fun. I think, and I think that's the fun part about being the lighting supervisor, uh, which is very unique. It's it's like a, it's all about the challenge of it. I'm happy that you say that actually, because challenges we have on a day to day basis. <laughs> um, because you trained, so you trained in a program. Just for me and anyone who's watching, the the program in which you trained did it have a component that was uh, heavily theater based and also some dance do you tap into all of the mediums you know equally is there such thing as a program who like focuses on one versus the other um i i think it's probably very few programs that focus on all of the mediums and i think my school yukon did a really good job because while it was the theater department so that was what i was there to pursue um my advisor was a dance he toured with Mark Morris for years and years and years. So he was a, he came from a dance background. So he would implement, even though we had no dance program at UConn uh, and therefore no time to actually use these skills practically, we did a lot of dance paper projects. So when I thought about going on the road with the trucks, the little dance experience I had was really enhanced by the amount of dance lighting plots I'd seen before, which is Got cool. It. Got it. Um, so what is it then about the medium of dance um, that makes it rewarding or not, but rewarding, I would hope, for a lighting designer, for you in this case, compared to theater or TV, which are, I know, some of the other mediums that you work with quite a bit? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's such a good question. Uh, well, we can kind of um, kick TV out the door on that one when it comes to like, creatively rewarding because right. it's fun, but it's very different. Uh, mm -hmm. So theater is wonderful and that's what I'm trained in. But the difference with theater is the hierarchy of people you're communicating with as a designer. Really, you're, obviously you're an artist and you're an integral part of the artistic team, but the vision of the show is really the directors. And that, and there's a scenic designer, there's a costume, there's so many other things that you're collaborating with that it's really kind of a process that starts here and goes like this. Um, and dance is special because it's so much, well, it's obviously less about reading a script because there isn't a script, but it's so much more like emotional and thought and the lighting, you're, you're lighting bodies. So the, the literal art to it can be a lot more than when you're lighting an opera and you're just trying to make the set pretty and see someone's face. Um, yeah, I'm not totally sure if I'm answering this well, but dance is, is to me the most fun thing to light because you have a lot more creativity in that you're not limited by seeing someone's face reading lines, which is something we all struggle with in school when we're starting off on our artistic journey. And we're like, this is gonna have purple side light and a green this, and there's gobos and this, and then you put it on stage and the director's like, can you please just turn on the front lights because I, I need to see what they're saying. And th this is why we're here. Um, 
And so in dance, you're you're kind of a lot more part of the storytelling as a lighting designer. And I think that that's just so much fun. And you do get to make a piece of art that you look, sit back and look and you're like, wow, those people look gorgeous. And that's the point. And uh, I'm here to help with that. So. And in jobs, you have to, I mean, your theater background in terms of, of lighting design does come greatly into play because you are not dancing you are not just lighting them three dimensionally to enhance their bodies, but you still have to throw the that enormous yeah. amount of front light, right? The truck is almost a completely different ball game than even that description of dance because you've got a lot more layers happening. You have the drag makeup that mm -hmm. you have to blast and make really pretty. You have the beautiful bodies, but the really unique bodies too, which is another point of the trucks from tutus to tights. And then you have the layer of the history of it all. So you also have the context of ballets that are older than I am. Right. And that is a, a totally, that's just another layer of design you have to think about. Yeah. Uh, like you've said, it, and kind of calling, like paying homage to what the designer chose at that time because of why that looked good or was cool. Um, yeah. Since hindsight, since hindsight, hindsight is always twenty twenty, as we know, especially in this medium. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, sh share with us something that you have learned from from touring that academia could have never prepared you for, regardless of how good whatever program you went to was. Um, you know, they can't really prepare you for real life. But what have you learned? in like your day-to-day -day touring that would have never been able to be, you know, shared while in school? That That's pretty straightforward to me. It's the ability to adapt when you are an artist. Because when you're in college, you are working in the same theaters with the same people and the same teachers and your timelines are long and it's designed for you to not fail. And it's designed for you to go through the process the right way and assume that things are gonna work out. Like if I have a special request for lighting, I can walk up to whoever's been assigned as the master electrician and say, how do we make this work together? Um, and then you have time, you have advisors. It's when you get out of school, the biggest kick in the face is adapting because you come up with these ideas, you follow your plan, you do your paperwork, and then you walk into the theater and it, that's not it at all. And sometimes there's no time to change it. So you're designing the show with whatever they put up in the air, which we've seen before, especially with the tracks because of how tight our timelines are and how we truly work to keep the shows with house inventory, meaning the lights that are already in the theater. Um, so you're kind of negotiating over the internet, thinking you're gonna end up with one thing and then sometimes running into something completely different and you have to adapt. And that was hard for me to adapt to in the first place because I kind of came straight out of academia. I had other jobs before going on tour with the trucks, but nothing in a touring lighting supervisor capacity. So that was a big one. Was it demoralizing? Like um, if you can't adapt and the result is not what you envision, especially from somebody that comes from a designer background, is it like, Ugh, or, and if it is, how do you overcome that? That is such an interesting question. Um, yeah, this question, I'm throwing her a curveball here. No, I love it. Um, <laughs> so when you first asked if that's demoralizing, I had like a smash cut memory of me crying in a bathroom in Italy because there have, but but that's not the regular. That's that's probably the first time I had such an instance of I can't make this be what I want it to be, and I have to accept that. And then I moved on from that. And I don't consider it demoralizing anymore. I consider it kind of a fun challenge. Um, I, you have to work pretty hard to get me upset about things because I know that the bigger picture is, do the guys look beautiful? Are the ballets lit? Are we putting the, or is the curtain going up on time? Like that is what I'm there to do. Time. You know, yeah. people having a good time, which yes. for us in the trucks, it's always such a, a, a balm uh, when that curtain goes up, you know, cause you can have that day where you're just like, this sucks. We've spent 12 hours to try to make something happen. And yet that curtain does come up and you're seeing it with a production eye where you're just like, Ugh. and the audience is having the best night they have had at the theater in months because they are allowed to laugh and enjoy it. And I mean, I know from my journey, that's what saved me from like a demoralized, you know, feeling. So I was 
interested in knowing if you felt that way, just like knowing that the bigger picture is more than yeah. your and that's something I learned with you guys. And that's something that's, it, the, it all washes away when that, I'm fortunate enough in my job, when the sh curtain goes up, I'm in the front with the people, either running the light board myself or just supervising um, from the front. So that is, as soon as this show starts, the, it all melts away because I can see the audience's faces and that's what we're there for. So yeah, it's only demoralizing until 7.30, 8 o'clock. Now, from somebody that came from, again, from a design background, trained to be a designer, and when you leave academia, you're ready to have this job putting your creativity, your creative input from your vision into lighting, and you think that's going to be what your major contribution is to the process, and you end up in a supervisory position, as a lot of dance companies require. Um, I've known a lot of people that come from a design background that the supervisory position really breaks them down after a while, and they feel like they're not being creative. Um, when you were, as you're having a supervisory job, do you find ways in which being creative um, to your satisfaction? Or how do you uh, quench your thirst for creativity on a day-to-day -day basis, since you're working with a rep plot, you know? Right. Well, that is a really good question. I feel like that's something that everybody who graduates college faces as soon as you get into the real world. You kind of think, I'm going to be this big artist and just make art and then you need to find something to sustain you and suddenly and there's all of these jobs are so nuanced like lighting designer for tv lighting supervisor like but the best thing about the trucks is and being the lighting supervisor of the trucks is i i think some of us have called it the isabel martinez bug this <laughs> like excitement for and the creativity of solving problems mm. is just massive it's so much fun like it is creative. I don't know if most people think of problem solving as creative, but it just opens a whole other door to what things you can do and what you can pull off. And yeah, it's super creative. I, I didn't find myself itching for that something more creative and on from more of a design standpoint anytime I was on the road because I was too busy finding creative solutions for problems. <laughs> or at, queuing it, we still have to queue the show every single day. And it is, as a lighting designer, really satisfying when something looks good, even if it looks the same way it did yesterday, which is kind of the point. Um, when you see a body in light and you know that it looks really good and you made it look that way, that's that's creativity. So, I yeah, I love it. And I definitely learned in this job to find delight and the creativity in those things. Yeah. That, and I've taken that with me since. And yeah, it's that's definitely the difference. The thing is, as a creative individual, especially you, when you're trained to use that creativity to look at the world, you can apply it in a, in a myriad of ways, right? So uh, yeah. you are using the, the same creativity that you need to tap into to put colors and pigments and light together in order to come up with a design of your own is the exact same creativity you're applying to sorting out how you're going to use this instrumentation in a theater even though it's not what you would have preferred to have in order to create the lighting, right? I mean, exactly. I, right? I mean, in, in a circumstance where we walk into the theater and they have none of the gels you asked for, which is the colored filter you put in front of the lights, um, what happens. which I'm not describing to you, but to anybody who doesn't know yeah. what <laughs> um, the you have to re gel the show all over again that day, which that's kind of a fun challenge. You're like, suddenly you're right back in school and art world with your little swatch books. Like, okay, what looks most like this and then has to be combined with this because this is the only blue they have. So <laughs> absolutely, it's super creative. It's creative in a slightly more stressful way, but you kind of get used to that on tour and it becomes this like high for the day of what's right. next, what's all the next, it's fun. Um, so favorite piece of your of favorite piece of yours of the Trox repertory of which now I mean she's already done you've already done over 25 pieces with the Trox because we rotate them so often and you've seen so many others which one would you say is your favorite Okay I have to preface this but it was a very hard decision because I like so many of them so much For different reasons. I design one um but it's definitely hands down Paquita because it's an act three piece. It is sparkly. It is pink and purple and red and glitter. And it has a beautiful set. 
The audience gasps when the curtain goes out often, which I just find delightful, especially because the only thing they're looking at is the set and lights. So selfishly, I'm like, yes. But I need it as amazing. It's it's funny um, and pretty. It's such a simple design, too. You know, it like uh, it's so well conceived. It's a it's a design uh, by Kip Marsh, who has been in the company rep forever, and it's such a great piece in so many levels. But um, we'll see a clip of it as we sign off today. But you'll see that um, you just see bright and sparkly, but there's so many layers and systems that have to go into it just so you can light those guys properly. That you know. Yeah. Well, not even from an entertainment standpoint, I just love it. But from a lighting standpoint, it is, it doesn't look like, it just that looks great right. and colorful, but it doesn't look like much. But the amount of work that goes into it to make it look perfect, it's it's a lot. Yeah. And that, it's so satisfying. Ugh. And the piece delivers, like every time it delivers from all And angles. it has a good beginning, middle, end. Like it's just, uh, it's such a complete, fun piece. Arc. I love it. Um funny, funny stories from tour. Any that you care to share? I mean, there's too many because as, as, <laughs> um, yeah, as you can imagine, the trucks are all about fun, even when the stuff goes oh, yeah. Did you ask the dancers all what the funny memory? They probably no, no, because, um, because I, I tell you're afraid of the <laughs> I'll tell you why. This question came to us by our general manager, Liz Harler, uh, because she, she thought that we were going to be really boring talking about lighting stuff so she wanted to throw some lightness into it but no i can't ask the guys funny stories can you imagine what they'll be sharing <laughs> that's why i'm gonna share a funny technical story because yeah, 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 all the night out funny stories I, this is we've skipped those for a reason um i think it's probably when we were flying from montreal to texas um see hindsight it's funny yeah. <laughs> um we are flight we missed our flight, which never happens because we were always at the airport so early. A small child had thrown up in the customs line. And because we need to get the guys on the plane, um, me and Isabel and Barb, who uh, was uh, with the company at the time, were at the end of the line and we ended up getting held. We missed our flight. We had to all get on different flights and somehow make it to Texas, rent a car, drive the four hours, to the small town of Texas we were even meant to be in. And after this horrible long day of stress and just unnecessary anxieties and tears, we are driving down the road, the highway in a rental car and a piece of the rental car ripped off the stuff okay. and blew into the road behind us. And I could not stop laughing. <laughs> it was right next to me because I was in the back seat and it just went, you heard like, Funk. and Barb was driving and she was like, and I couldn't stop laughing long enough to explain that a piece of the car had torn off of itself and dumped in the middle of the road. But those kind of things are terrible at the time, but you think about it. I mean, we spent how long in the Mexico City airport that one time? Six um, hours? Yeah, at least. Again, just the us, the dancers went through. Just us. Yeah, the technicians have fun too, even if that's just having a bunch of margaritas because you're stuck in the Mexican airport for- It happens. But I mean, you, there's still to go on so you just have to get ready and do it the next day so um yeah. oh god how are you maintaining yourself um employed during this time of hiatus for the company and have you explored other fulfilling avenues besides what you normally do um well the first part i have not been doing a good job maintaining it's kind of impossible for somebody like yeah. me uh I, I can freelance I'm, I've done a couple of small jobs here and there, but I'm normally a freelancer and I'm not on the road with the trucks. So that is gone because any company that hires freelancers has already had to lay off so much of their staff that when they have work come up, they have to hire back their own staff to do it, obviously. So it is not good for somebody like me right now. A couple of projects here and there, some creative passion projects with friends, um, which has been the creative sustenance, but employment wise i'm lucky that new york has extended unemployment benefits because and if it goes away a lot of us are going to be totally screwed then the flip side the the second part of the question it hasn't obviously this is a completely terrible circumstance but i having been on tour for the last four years have never gotten to spend this much time home so i guess i would say i'm sustaining myself like personally and creatively with who I am outside of being a designer on the road. 
That's been really so easy to forget when you're always oh like on the road, you know, to sort of reclaim that it's a big deal. You know? Yeah. So I've been sustaining myself with what have I not been doing for the last four years, cooking my meals, spending time with my husband, cleaning an apartment, putting up some decorations. That's how I've been getting through this man. You got it's the little things, figuring out what makes us well-rounded when we're so used to being on the road and just doing the grind and living our work. I mean, it's all about how you look at life, right? Like mm -hmm. how to make the best out of a, the terrible situation that we find ourselves in. And I think we've all um, evolved into trying to figure out what that is to keep ourselves somewhat mentally. And it's not good training when you're stuck in an airport for 15 hours or you're stuck in Michigan for three extra days. Like it's good to keep that is another funny story about that time we all went um, pizza box sledding at the airport. And yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you it's it's good training for how to handle a situation that is unprecedented and kind of scary. Erica, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with anyone who wants to watch this and learn a little bit more about what lighting the trucks is. I'm going to tap you for final thoughts in a second. But before I do that, I do, this is where we beg you guys, I do want to remind you that closures and cancellations due to the COVID-19 pandemic and how the world is going for everybody right now have greatly disrupted access to revenue for dance companies and arts organizations all over the world, including the Trox. Um, it, and as Erica said, it has been really, really hard, not just for the performers, but for technic technicians and other creatives everywhere. So if you are enjoying the content that you are watching, which is often free, uh, and it's within your capabilities to do so, please consider donating to your favorite arts organization, that being the Trox or anyone else out there, because we all need it. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can do the, that by following at Rare Ballet Trocadero. And if you wish to donate to the trucks, you can do so by going to www.trocadero.org forward slash donate. Um, most importantly, when things do normalize, whatever that may be, and we do get back on the road, please consider supporting all of those dance companies in person, live performers everywhere, and technicians like us, um, like to work live for you. Our job doesn't mean as much when we don't have the opportunity to interact with the audience. So on that note, Erica, final thoughts that you wanna share with folks say before we say goodbye, any um, you know, messages or negative messages? <laughs> no, no negativity here. We gotta stay positive. Um, please vote and think about the arts organizations when you do because uh, who runs the country is vital and what that means for all of us in any job, in any industry, but especially arts organizations that people consider um, not essential or important or worth cutting in schools. Uh, I know that if I didn't have art in school, I would not be where I am today or the person I am today. And if you can donate to arts organizations and support your friends who are just doing videos for Instagram or makeup tutorial, Anything people are doing, artists out of work are doing online is like the last bastion of, I can still do what I normally do. So support your friends, watch their videos. Um, yeah, boost each other. And come see us live when we're back. And come together. see us live when we're back. Gosh, I cannot wait. I can't wait to smell a theater again and, and hear the track of their music and see the dying swan. Um, so oh, make that happen. Exactly, let's make that happen really soon. So. Um, Stay safe, everyone. Vote like Erica said. We are going to say goodbye, but we're going to leave you with a tiny clip of uh, Erica's favorite piece from the Trox repertory, Paquita. So do watch to the end. It's a, it's a darn good time. So bye, everyone. Bye, Erica. Thank you. Thank you.